Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of the Kent Star Community News Weekly Video Update. My name is John Kendall. I'm the managing editor at Kent Star Community News, and today I'm joined by Caitlin Stryland of the Metro. Welcome back, Caitlin. Thanks for having me. Uh, so we're here today to uh, discuss the paper of June 30th, uh, the day before Canada Day, and uh, you've got a couple of, well, many really good stories in it, but a couple that really stood out to me. The first uh, was a story about a hockey coach from your coverage area who has been named as uh, the top community coach in Manitoba by Hockey Canada. Now, tell me a little bit about this woman and the team she's coached and how she came to hear about this award. Janelle Forkand, uh, she teaches U11 female hockey in Manitoba, uh, specifically in Winnipeg. And a few months back, she got a call from Hockey Canada letting her know that she won um, Manitoba's Community Hockey Coaching Award. And she was extremely grateful for that opportunity. She was very excited. And then um, just last month or earlier this month, she got another call from Hockey Canada. But um, this time it was um, Cassie Campbell from Hockey Night in Canada, I yeah. believe. And yes, she... Cassie Campbell Pasco, uh, for those who don't know, is uh, a much decorated uh, former na member of the Canadian women's national hockey team, won uh, several world championships and Olympic gold medals, and uh, is about as close to a superstar as, uh, as you get in Canadian women's hockey. And she's uh, currently uh, a guest analyst and panelist on Hockey Night in Canada throughout uh, the 2021 playoffs. Exactly. So when she was on the line of the call, uh, Janelle immediately knew they weren't just calling her to check up on like some jersey sizing or to confirm contact info. And then Cassie broke the news that Janelle actually won the nationwide community hawking coaching award um, in the women's category. And yeah, from there, um, they sent her like a jersey with her name on the back, a bunch of swag. And yeah, they have her recognized on the website and she's super, super excited about uh, the prospect of that award. Oh, that's fantastic. I hadn't realized that it was a national award. I misread your story. And so she's the uh, the top uh, women's hockey coach in Canada, which is uh, absolutely fantastic for Janelle, who, as you say, coaches uh, U11 hockey in uh, the St. James area. And indeed, uh, players come to her teams from all over West Winnipeg, including some in uh, uh, the community of Head Headingley and uh, the RMs that surround Headingley as well. So very cool for Janelle. Excellent. And uh, if people can't see it because we're doing a video thing, but on the uh, actually I've got the paper right here. So I'll just hold it up and uh, let people see that picture of Janelle there. And she's wearing the Hockey Canada jersey that uh, she was presented as part of the package uh, that she gets for winning the award. What uh, what else did they give her? Do you know? I believe, um, as far as I know, it was just the recognition on the website. And I think they may have sent her, yeah, just like a care package with a bunch of different items. It's, it's an honor nonetheless, uh, and a national honor. And uh, people should take note of that name. Janelle Forkand is obviously a coach to watch for in the future as she... Uh, perhaps moves up the ranks in uh, the women's hockey world. Okay, so um, moving on from Hockey Canada, which is sort of one symbol of Canada before Canada Day, you see what I'm doing here. We can move on to uh, another Canadian symbol uh, of a different sort entirely, and this is the CF-104 Starfighter. Uh, kind of an iconic airplane that I knew very little about before I read your story about how the Royal Aviation Museum of Western Canada is going to take possession of uh, a CF-104 Starfighter. Please tell me more about this. Yes, yeah, so there is a museum out in St. Andrews called the Canadian Starfighter Museum. And uh, the curator, Steve Peugeot, he 
got this CF-104 Starfighter plane that it is kind of one of the best known planes in the Royal Canadian Air Force. And this plane was actually made in North America. This specific plane was made here in North America, and then it was used in the Denmark Air Force. Okay. So it spent a number of years in Europe. And then um, someone from the US who Steve knows in the aviation industry, um, let him know about this plane that was no longer kind of in museum shape, but wasn't quite scrap. It was kind of in the middle. Okay. So Steve took it upon himself to actually bring the plane back to Canada, completely remodel the whole thing. He changed the landing gear, did a bunch of body work to the aircraft and created a museum right around this specific plane. And um, it's been open for a number of years, but the hangar where the plane's being stored in St. Andrews, um, the owner is deciding to sell it. So the museum is closing and then Steve Pajot is kind of, he's known um, Terry Slobodian, the CEO of the Royal Aviation Museum of Western Canada for a while. Um, so when uh, the two spoke about what to do with the plane next, um, it kind of perfectly coincided with the new opening of the Aviation Museum by the St. James Airport. So when it opens in early 2020, uh, the CF-104 will be on display there. In, in, in early 2022, yeah. 2020. Uh, the, yeah, the, uh, there's a couple things that fascinated me about the story. Uh, first is that uh, I didn't know, but it only makes sense that there was uh, a group of people in the world who are sort of aviation enthusiasts and collectors of aircraft, much in the same way that, you know, car enthusiasts are collectors of classic cars and things of that nature. So the CF-104 is indeed a, a classic Canadian plane, iconic, if you will. Um, and the, so the other thing is that Steve got the plane up here and refurbished it and rebuilt it much in the same way that you would recondition a classic car. I can't uh, imagine this, the amount of uh, work and, uh, and time and, and money and energy that has probably gone into this project. Now you talk to Steve, uh, where did all this interest in it come from? So his interest in this uh, CF-104 Starfighter goes back to the 1960s. He was stationed with his family in Germany. His dad was a member of the Royal Canadian Air Force. Okay. And the family was living outside of the base. So obviously there's a lot of air traffic going yeah. over at all times. And he heard one day this sound of an aircraft flying overhead. He didn't see it at first, but he heard the sound and he likened it to the, like the cry of a moose. He said it had okay. a bit of a kind of like a low pitched wailing sound that he'd okay. never heard before, any aircraft make before. Um, and he started asking around like, what is this plane? And eventually his science teacher is actually the one who got him um, kind of access to the information about the plane. Um, so through kind of his school and then his relationship with his dad, he kind of realized he himself wanted to be a pilot one day. And specifically, he wanted to fly the CF-104 aircraft. Um, and he actually did that. So he went and got his pilot's license. Um, he flew commercially for a number of years and eventually became an aircraft mechanic. And one day he did find himself in the driver's seat of a CF-104, so full circle. Amazing. In the in the cockpit of a, of a cockpit. CF one hundred four, that's that's what the driver's seat is called in an airplane. The terminology is different from vehicle to vehicle to vehicle, but exactly. you know, since you're not a pilot, you wouldn't necessarily know. No worries whatsoever. Uh, and that's the thing about being a reporter is that uh, you know you uh, can be an instant expert uh, from story to story to story. So I imagine you now know a lot more about aviation, collecting airplanes, and the CF one hundred four Starfighter than you ever thought you would know even last week. This is very true, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, what are you becoming an instant expert in this week uh, as you work on stories for July 7th? Yeah, so this week I worked on a number of stories. Um, one of them that really stood out to me, it has a very kind of fun, playful summer vibe. 
there's an artist living in Wolseley and she has this pop-up store she's running out of her apartment through the window I should mention it's called the window store and so she lives in the basement suite of an apartment on a very kind of busy intersection which remains a mystery and I'll, I'll get to that part in a minute but through this window she uh, decorated it as if it was a real store like there she has the hand sanitizer the curtains like business cards like the whole little bit and every few weeks she'll have a secret pop-up so she'll go around Wolseley and put up QR codes that people can scan and it is a map it like drops a pin on their map so they can go check out the store and she announces it ahead of time on Instagram and she sells everything from like earrings to magnets um, a lot of like ceramic crafts. Oh, really cool. So what is her name? So her, her name is The Window Store, uh, but her uh, name is Willow D. She, yeah, her last name is a bit of a mystery as well to protect okay. the privacy of her home and all that. So I understand. So uh, it's a bit of a secret, but not quite. And if you're interested and you're wandering the Wolseley area, you should be looking for QR codes uh, on places like, say, the bulletin board outside Tallgrass Prairie Bakery or various uh, hydro poles uh, around the Wolseley neighborhood. And you may just get lucky and find out that there's uh, uh, going to be an open window uh, of opportunity for people to buy Willow D's artwork at the window store. That's fascinating. And I see what you mean. It is kind of fun and summary. So I look forward to reading that next week. And I hope that uh, our viewers and readers will do the same. Thanks for uh, taking a few minutes today to, to join us. And uh, to our viewers, I just want to say thank you very much for uh, tuning in. And to remind you that we post these videos live to canstarnews.com at five o'clock every Wednesday afternoon. They can also be found on our YouTube channel, which is simply Canstar Community News every Wednesday at five. Thanks for uh, playing this video. And thank you, Caitlin, for joining us. And take care, everyone. I'll be back next week with a different member of uh, the Canstar Community News reporting staff.